Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we are diving deep into an interview today. We are going to talk about a unique topic. It's not a new topic anymore, a new trend, but it's not, it's not new anymore. It's AI, artificial intelligence. They're outthinking us, outdoing us, outsmarting us. But this young man here I'm about to bring to the stage has done something unique and brought it to a new unique platform and done something with our mortgage lending industry. And he's changing the absolute game. And and he is younger than me. I, 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 we're going to find out here, but this man is making headlines. You won't want to miss one second of what he's putting out today on the Gentleman Style Podcast show. So stay with us. Stay tuned. Here we go. Yep. It's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And I got coming to the stage, Michael Wande. He's a 24-year-old CEO coming all the way from Silicon Valley with a huge, huge brain and an even bigger heart. This man is changing the mortgage lending industry and the tech space and blowing and taking the world by storm. He holds a master's degree in software engineering and artificial intelligence from Carnegie Mellon University and has extensive experience working on enterprise AI and Amazon Web Services, AWS. That's a topic we have not had on the show just yet, but this man is here to spill all the tea and introduce us to a new market, a new industry, and how his, his AI technology is going to help change and innovate and make the world a better place for all of us. So help me welcome to the stage the incredible Michael Mondi. Thank you, you doing, so sir? much. Welcome to the Gentleman Style Podcast show, sir. You are awesome. Thank you for being here. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, excited to be here. Excited to have you. This is this is the we are going to dive into not a new, like I said, not a new topic, but an important topic, artificial intelligence. And, you know, everybody has mixed feelings about it. I still feel, even though we know it's here to stay, but yep. is, is, is artificial intelligence. I want to ask, I want to start with a very like icebreaker is artificial intelligence, you know, going to take over the world. Are we going to look forward to like doomsday robots and terminators taking over the United States here? No, no. We're good. Yeah. We're safe. We're safe. Okay. We're safe. Yeah. So what what inspired you, Mr. Mr. Vondi? What inspired you? What encouraged you to take dive into this unique industry and revamp the mortgage industry? I gotta ask. Yeah, my biggest inspiration is my mom. Um when I was a kid, I actually watched my mom build a house from scratch and she she like took over all the processes involved. So she made the architecture, she got the loans herself, she, you know, got the contractors, she built the plans and she built like the interior decoration. So I've seen a very strong woman go through the process of building a home and not of home in like the metaphorical sense, but in the physical sense. Uh, and this was in Sierra Leone, West Africa. So when I came to the U.S., I saw how easy the process was. Um, you can get a loan from a bank, and then uh, from there, you can have, like, loan officers just do all the vetting for you, and you don't even have to have all the, you know, down payment. And so having lived through all those two different contrasts, I studied artificial intelligence. And after studying artificial intelligence, I was like, well, this process could be improved a lot more. So I naturally know someone who has uh, an inclination for business, I decided to build a, a company around this just from the inspiration that I got from my mother. Absolutely. And and th shout out to mom. Shout out to mom. I mean, moms are awesome. Moms are, moms are necessary. We need more moms that, 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 that just inspire and encourage. The love of a mother really makes a difference in a young man's life because it's, it's the counterbalance that we need to show us that we can do it, right? Where yeah. dad may be like, you know, hey, you know, give up basketball, you're terrible, you suck. Yeah. 
<laughs> mom is like, keep going, keep going. So that's yeah. that's huge. So shout out again to mom. Um, oh yeah, for, she grew up in a sing single parent mom. She was a single parent, so amazing. So even more incredible, right? Because she yeah. she had to do it all. She had to juggle it all. And so I want to really understand. I want to dive a little bit deeper. Um, the process of you watched your mom do everything from start to finish, and you wanted to change that. And so what is mortgage origination really? What does that process look like for those who haven't bought a home or haven't bought a house yet? And because we're still living in a renter's economy here. So what what does that process look like if you could give us a rundown? Yeah. So the loan origination process for mortgages is the process from which when you apply for a mortgage loan, a loan officer has to, first of all, receive your application. They have to review it. They have to vet it. They have to follow up with you, get all your documents, and then all the way to like conditional approval, pre-approval, all the way to closing the loan. So that's what is known as loan origination. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so where do you see artificial, where have you blended in artificial intelligence into that process? It said yeah. you and a partner got into the business together or, or, or is just you? So I founded the company as a solo founder with an amazing team of um, machine learning engineers and um, our earliest customers as design partners or people who have um, private mortgage lending companies and have, you know, lent out like millions and millions to billions of dollars in mortgage loans a year. So we, we partner with people um, who've been in the industry for a really long time and we come in with the artificial intelligence expertise. Absolutely. And so you said you hire, so they they all work for you. It's you and your team and they work with you to help yeah. build your vision out and create this in wonderful piece. And so I want to bring this up on a big screen because I think it's important. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence that uses algorithms to teach machines to learn from data and past experiences, identify patterns, and make predictions. Like I said, this gentleman has a big brain, <laughs> big brain, big mind. So we're going we're gonna to be using terms this episode that has definitely gone over my head, but I want to keep us all on track so we understand the impact and the power. And I think that's that's huge, right? We got to, we got to, this man has an incredible 3,000 foot view, 6,000 foot level brain thinking. He's up here and he sees the vision. He's a plan. He's a mastermind. And so bringing it down here to see how this is improving our lives for the better so people don't get freaked out and get scared. Because when I hear the word machine learning, I instantly think, again, Terminator, my toaster is going to kill me. My microwave is going to attack me. You know, the next time I say something out of line or I try to warm up that cup of ramen noodles to too high a temperature. So I definitely want to set the stage here and, and, and tee you up um, as the professional, as an expert. And so how do you, you, you and your team, how have you guys penetrated the mortgage industry with, art, with the use of artificial intelligence for our betterment? To, to, okay. to better our lives. Can I ask that? Yeah. So when you apply for a mortgage loan, it takes anywhere from like 45 days to 60 days to get an approval, which is a really long time. Very true. And it involves a lot of constant follow-ups with you, a lot of documents. And the people who are reviewing your application, these loan officers, they have to review hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents. It's a super manual process and it takes a long time. And it's very frustrating for any um, client who's gone through that process. So what Addy AI does, that's our company. So we help these loan officers train private AI assistants that can process these loan documents. So for instance, extracting all the necessary information that they need from it. So if you have like a 1099, what's your, you know, yearly income? Uh, if you submit stuff about the property, we want to extract all the property information from hundreds of pages of attachments. And then we make sure that we connect it to whether it's a bank or a private lender, we connect it to their CRM within seconds, which helps these loan officers save a lot of time and then close loans much faster. So if you are um, someone who's borrowing a loan, you get to, you know, 
go through the process twice as fast, leads to a great experience for you. And then if you're a lender, you get to have a more efficient process. So, so I want to, I want to stay with you here. This cause this is good. This is really good, right? I'm excited. I'm a real estate investor. I'm excited here. So yeah. the, the artificial intelligence scrubs the data points that I submitted on a platform yeah. or uh, uploaded on a portal and the artificial intelligence scrubs that information. So I'm uploading um, inspections, all the inspections that I've done, the pre-inspections, um, any applicable information, the title information from the legal system, the courthouses, that is all uploaded to a portal yeah. and the, the AI scrubs that data and presents it nice and neat to the mortgage, mortgage lender, the, the mortgage analyst. Yeah. So you kind of like put all the, the information that you submit. So you have to submit proof of income. So mm -hmm. sometimes bank statements, tax returns, pay stubs. Um, you have to submit like, you know, proof of assets. You have to submit proof of identity. You have to submit credit information and property information, like, you know, insurance and things like that. And um, these loan officers have to go through all those documents. And typically they only need um five or six things from wow. from a, a document let's say you submitted um for instance let's take an example of um you submitted like a, a 1099 like the biggest thing in the 1099 would just be like what's your annual income right so if you submit a 1099 it takes someone like five minutes to go through and get your annual income just how about just giving it to them immediately right. so that's that's what we do huge <laughs> <laughs> Told y'all. Huge the brain. Sound effects. The sound effects. That's good. It's the first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, man. We are we are enjoying this. We the audience loves you. The people love you, man. This is this is good, right? Especially for it, it now. There's a big conundrum, right? There's the fear of putting people out of jobs. Um, does your AI technology that you've created put anyone out of out of work? right? Because it speeds up the process. So there's definitely ease of use. You still have the the, the mortgage lender is still in place. Um, does this remove like the real estate, the need for the real estate agent to kind of be the middleman or does this just kind of work hand in hand with them? It does not remove the need for a real estate agent um, or a broker. Actually, we do need brokers in order for this to work. Um, because most lenders actually communicate with the brokers instead of the clients. Some clients don't have the time to, you know, go through all of this. So they hire a broker to broker the loans for them and explain everything to them. So we have to work hand in hand with the brokers and the lenders as well. And um, um, I think like it's a broader question of whether or not AI is going to take jobs. And a lot of jobs are at risk. My job is at risk. I'm a software engineer by trade. And 20% um, mm. of the code that I write right now is written by AI. So in 10 years, I might not have a job as a software engineer. In 20 years, I might not have a job as a software engineer. So it's even like an existential thing for me. And uh, how I try to think about it is like new industries would emerge, like new roles would emerge. Um, but at the point, the state of the technology that it is right now, it is not sufficient to completely take over um, the job of an entire loan officer. It's much more helpful to like help the loan officer sort of like a co-pilot to um, um, a co-pilot to help them uh, close loans faster. And even if the technology is, let's say, 99.9% .9 accurate, like we're dealing with finances here, you know, the average American has around 45% of their net worth in home equity. You don't want to give that responsibility to an AI to decide like the financial assets of um, the majority of Americans, even if it's 99.9% .9 accurate. So I think this is an industry where um, for a very long time, we're going to see human AI collaboration. Huge. I love that. And I, I love that you're not, we're not hurting anyone. We're, we're, we're helping each other, right? We're helping the, the loan originator. We're helping the, the, uh, 
the real estate agent, the broker, and we're helping the customer. What are, what's the average? How fast are we closing now? Because you gave the timeline about 30 days to 45 days, which is average. How much faster are we closing on, on real estate transactions? So twice as fast. Um, typically, the the best loan officers only close like maybe two to three loans a month. Now they can close like um, twice that amount. Um, so sometimes the extraction processes take like two seconds latency. So if you submit a document in two seconds, imagine submitting a document and then in two seconds, the loan officer has all the information that they need to make an initial decision on your, um, on your application. Um, we're adding a whole lot of things with like AI agents that can automatically do background searches. So loan officers have to do these background searches manually. You go look up like, have you ever had like foreclosures before? Have you ever been in like some sort of like legal problems? And so we have all these AI agents that go out and do those research for the loan officer and then bring the information to them and present it to them. So the process is going to be fast, uh, much faster than it, it currently is. It's absolutely powerful. So it brings all the applicable information that the loan officer needs to them versus them having to go and seek them out. I imagine this is a huge collaboration with many different organizations, many different platforms. How long did it take you from start to finish to launch um, this this artificial intelligence? <laughs> if we think about how long the development of AI has been like since we started hearing about neural networks, which is like the foundation of these large language models from the 1950s. If we count all of that, this is like, you know, half a century, more sure. than half a century in, in the making. But I know your question is like in relation to when we started. So I started the company in December 2022. We were looking at like automating like the communication aspect of things. And then as we started training our own models, we built an infrastructure to train our models. So that took um, about a year. And then from there, we hired more people to just make it like a productized platform for the specific industry. So we've been at this for 18 or so months and you know it just keeps getting better and the models are getting better. But um, to answer your question, we've been at it for a while. That is a lot faster than than I expected, and I, I'm I'm thinking this took some time, like years. But wow, it's huge! It's super quick, super quick. So, what has been your biggest challenge? A 24 year old CEO, what has been some of your biggest challenges that you face when starting Addy AI for the business listeners and the, the CEOs in the audience that's watching this? And how did you overcome them? How did you you, you overcome adversity? And challenges with it with with Addy AI. <laughs> Spill a tea. If if you had a loose robot, tell it. If you had you know a <laughs> runaway robot, a runaway toaster, tell it. We've had many challenges in like different uh different categories. So we've had challenges with the product, we've had challenges with fundraising, we've had challenges with you know hiring and tech. Um so I'll talk about some of these categories if that's fine with you. Please, please, yes, sir. So challenges with fundraising, first of all, there was a time we were raising our bridge round and our lead investor pulled out like the uh, night before we were going to close the round. So that uh, sucked. And uh, once the lead investor pulls pulls out, you know, other it's like a domino effect. Other people like, you know, start thinking like, is this like a good investment or, or whatnot? So we actually had to pause the round. Um, go acquire more customers, gain more traction before going out to raise. And once we, we raised like a better round with much better investors that we even liked, and then we even got like better customers. But one of the things that taught me was investors care mostly about traction. So if you get traction and not only like any kind of traction, but, but good traction, like if you're getting like a, a million dollars in annual recurring revenue, but like, where's that coming from? Right. Um, so that's one of the, challenges around fundraising. Um, sure. Another challenge we had with product, I would say, is with the training. Um, so we did a whole lot of work with um, making sure that when you train the model, it doesn't favor like one specific set of the training data. 
versus the other. So if you train a model with like people who are getting like W2s more than 1099s, anytime it sees like a 1099, it says like, oh, we should not be giving out mortgage loans to this person with like a 1099, like something, something like that. So if you train with too much of one particular data set, the data gets the the accuracy of the model gets skewed towards that data set. It's something called overfitting in AI. So I had to, you know, had to overcome that challenge as well. So it's like, and then for me personally, I would say one of the biggest challenges, just letting go of amazing hires that, mm. you know, people who, you know, this is like a great hire, but it's just not the right time in the company for a skill set like that. You know, and just having to, and people who have been your friends before, just having to let them go, it really, really, really sucks. And it takes a while to recover from that if you ever really do recover from that. That is hard. That's super hard, especially when you know them personally. And so you've had to let go of, you're saying you've had to let go of top talent um, for various reasons of the company's growth um, in order for the company to move forward? Or how has that impacted you? Um, has it stagnated you a bit or just personally it's impacted you? It hasn't affected the overall operation. So it hasn't affected the overall operation. It's personally. And usually when we, um, you know, and when I say we, I think like me, when I think of um, this person no longer has a role in the company, whether or not it's like they are not meeting up expectations. You know, we want to build a team of A players, um, either not meeting up the expectations or let's say we're deciding to make a pivot or do something else. Uh, and it's like someone who has been my friend, I just feel a little bit of guilt, you know, and you want to keep them on payroll for like a couple more months and see like, oh, is this going to work out? Are they going to, you know, like um, get better? And then having to balance that as being a CEO, just like be doing what's best for the business, uh, you know, um, and, if, if I would tell anyone anything, it's like, it's really hard starting a company with people who are your friends, because... <laughs> it's true. So true. Super true. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to do the right thing sometimes when you start coming from your friends. Absolutely. You got to put your business needs before your own sometimes. And and it, we're human. And I appreciate, I appreciate the introspection that you've done on yourself. And it shows that you're human, right? It shows that you are not, you know, a lot of people have this mindset that CEOs are these cutthroat individuals. They don't care about anybody. They don't care about me. They don't have any empathy, you know, no emotional intelligence. But to sit here and listen to a CEO, as young as you are, sit here and express, listen, this was hard. This was not easy. It was not easy to let you go. Um we can still meet up for drinks. We can still do everything outside. But right now in this stage of the game, we're not a good fit and we need, but we have to continue to progress. Yeah. And so that's human and that's real. And so thank you for expressing well, that and sharing that because you don't hear that very often from CEOs, the yeah. humanity in them, right? Yeah. The humanity, especially now that we're talking about AI, <laughs> we, we kind of think like, oh, the soul is gone. He's, he's a robot now. He's still, we're still human. No. I hope that never happens in the lifetime of the company. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah you get replaced with um Veronica, and she's like sitting. You just, you know, the Doctor Evil look. You walk into your office, and like it's a virtual reality AI sitting in your chair. Like, mm -hmm. hello, Michael. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I want to talk. How how is the company doing now? How how do you in in the integration of all this? How do you make money, right? Because it seems like you streamline the process. Does the um bank or the mortgage originator um pay you guys, or does the broker pay you guys for the service? Who, who how do you guys make money in this? Yeah, the lenders pay the banks okay. and the private lenders. They pay a subscription for the service that we provide and um depending on their use case it might be a subscription based on the number of um loan officers that they have or it might be a subscription based on how many documents we have to process for them perfect and thank you for expressing that how what's the security like how do you ensure data security we just got a hack like last week friday or it wasn't necessarily a hack but we've been getting hacked targets been getting hacked 
Walmart's been getting hacked. We had a, a hack with the, the piping, the pipeline system and gas prices went through the roof. What is the data security and privacy when implementing AI solutions in, in finance? Because we're talking about people's money, right? So any what's the take on that? Yeah. This is one of the biggest um, challenges when you're innovating in a new industry that is in many ways still in its infancy is trying to balance not only like external security, someone breaking in, but internal security of the models hallucinating or the models like going, I don't want to use the word rogue, but the models, um, sure. you know, being less accurate than, than um, and they are. And if I put it into two groups, the first one is like, let's talk about internal security. Yes, and that's mostly around doing evaluations of the model. So putting the model in something called a sandbox where you test it and then you have humans like review the outputs and then actually score the outputs and then say, oh, hey, this model is like 90% accurate. And like no model ever goes to production if it's not over 95% accurate in, in our system. And then once it goes over to production, we always require a human reviewer to review the results from the model so like the, the output so let's say for instance like a 1099 it extracts like your income we need a human reviewer in the form of a loan officer to verify that because we're dealing with finances we want to make sure that it's uh, super accurate so that's how we deal with internal security of the models themselves a bunch of evaluations now when it comes to external security we do these partnerships with um, security funds that can actually test the security of your system and because we work with banks, these banks all also have their security um, um, processes that you have to go through reviews. So we do these security reviews um, with um, these banks as well. So we invest a whole lot into making sure that we have um, we have certifications, security certifications, and follow security reviews of the banks and lenders that we work with. Love that. <laughs> I'm loving these kind of Let's go. <laughs> style podcast. He's loving it. The mascot is loving it. I w thank you for breaking that down, talking about the internal security and and also the external. Right? There's always going to be hackers. I I'm I'm actually annoyed at hackers right now. There's a. It seems to be like more prevalent than ever. Right? Yeah. Just everything with social media finances again the targets the walmarts the pipelines all of it it seems like they're really really pushing um to really show america that even though we're a strong country and and not just america but across the world like hey we're a strong nation like oh no you're not let me show you <laughs> shut it down so it's it's really it's really yeah. like i've never i've never been this on edge about you know, two fact, never have I ever had to really consider, you know, my security for my person, right? I'm adding two factor authentication on everything. I'm adding more sophisticated passwords on everything. I'm adding, you know, face recognition. You know, we already got thumbprint recognition. It's probably not too far from now. My bank is going to require some retinal recognition <laughs> for me to get my statement. You know, like it's really yeah. getting to that point, like, that heightened level where they need to offer these higher levels of security to almost the everyday person. Yeah. Right. Whereas before it was like, okay, it's top secrets classified. Now, no regular people are getting affected and getting hacked and getting, yes. um, um, I had a friend, she got her social media. She had 90,000 followers. She got hacked a couple of weeks ago oh, and wow. she had, yeah, she had to fight to get that back. I think she got it back though, but that's, that's, that's hard. That's insane. Like the the reliability of our security systems, you know, it, it's insane to think that a lot of the world is reliant on a security system that could break with just one line of code. So the other day they had like the Windows computers were down because of something called like a, some company called um, CrowdStrike. Yep. And they had an issue with um, which caused like a lot of airlines to delay their flights you know hospitals couldn't get their systems online to just think like 
society is just so dependent on a code base. It's just really if one line of code breaks, you know, society goes to shit. Like the whole yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it speaks to how fragile we are, right? We've gotten, we've, we've made life so comfortable that one line of code can make everything uncomfortable like yeah. that across, across, you know, borders, nations, country, just that quickly. We're so integrated because we, it's almost like we need our technology now. We're not, yeah. we're no, we're no longer Neanderthals. We got a, um, opposable thumbs and we, we, we got our phone um on our hip right we got our, our walking robot a wally robot on our hip so yeah. it's really interesting it's really powerful um we all know what happened in 2008 can ai help in predicting and preventing any financial crises is there any thing that you see coming on the pipeline that um the ai model can actually help predict future attacks anything like that so you know this is a question that I think about a lot. Yeah. It's like, can AI pre predict? Are we going to have a situation where mortgage backed securities, um, you know, are going to go, um, you know, be over leveraged? And one of the ways I think, if we think about this from a technical perspective, is well, what really is the AI that we need for that? And that would be some sort of like, um, I wonder how technical the audience is like, let's say like a regression model. And these are AI systems that have been around for a really, really long time. And they can do a reasonable job of predicting whether or not um, a price of something's like gonna go up or gonna go down based on like a couple of parameters. But humans have actually been able to predict um, financial crisis before with reasonable degrees of certainty. Like anyone who has like common sense, who had common sense, yeah, I think in 2008, like who predicted the uh, financial crisis, some, what's this, like the the, the movie, The the Big Short or the something? The Big Short. Big Short. I can't remember who that person's name was, but a human looked at mortgage-backed securities and like, these are getting over leveraged. We should take a look at it. So that is not complicated financial analysis. That is very simple analysis that AI can do. Now, it's not only him. Like a lot of people looked at it and was like, hey, these mortgage-backed securities are over leveraged, but they were just so, you know, ingrained in the culture and the money, it was just printing money that it had no, they had no like conscience in, in, into like stopping it from like happening. And that's one thing I think like AI would be much better at than humans because AI does not directly benefit from the positive outcomes of let's say particular scenarios. So like humans benefit from all the money that was coming in from over leveraged mortgage backed securities, but AI is not gonna benefit from it. So if an AI predicts it, the real question is if it gets predicted by an AI, will a human have the courage to come forward and say, and you know, present the prediction out if someone's going to see that prediction and dis disregard it so i'm not really worried about whether or not ai would have the power to do it which i'm pretty sure it will because of it's not crazy difficult financial analysis but will the humans in charge have the courage to speak up on it and i think that should be like the real question love it love it love it this is impactful. We have to, speaking of AI, we have to go to our, our, our artificial intelligence sponsors. No, I'm just kidding. They're real people. We have to go to our show sponsors and pay some bills, y'all. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com.
Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. We are back to Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and we got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Michael Bondi. And this is this is actually selfish of me because I'm really taking advantage of this opportunity to really talk with someone that's really knowledgeable, expert, a professional CEO, founder in the AI space. So I'm really taking advantage of it. I'm giving them a beating, y'all. This is this is huge. If you missed any of that, go back, scroll back. We are on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Ghana, iHeartRadio, Audible, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, Facebook business page and anywhere you get your podcast, radio.com, anywhere you get your podcast, go back and check him out. He's really spilling some, some, some tea here. And I, I'm, I love this. This is huge. Um, you, AI, I feel has already infiltrated a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of spaces already. And now you with Addy AI is now, and I told, I, I found myself telling my friend, one of my good friends, him and his wife who are real estate brokers, that you know one of the industries that i think will be affected is the real estate industry and here you are proving that you know even <laughs> small minded as i am i was kind of right that you yeah. know ai is really and what the prediction was was ai was going to i think um i forget the company i don't think is it zillow but one of the big players what they're really trying to work on is they're really trying to make it where you can buy or sell a house without ever needing to really be boots on the ground or ever need a real estate broker. And I feel like their role and their position is not going to disappear, but it's going to convert to where they still need them to draft the documents and their names are going to be on the documents, but they don't have to have the face to face and you could actually buy and sell a house with the integration of AI and blockchain, right? The ledger and 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 helping track who owns this real estate, who, who sold this real estate, when did you sell it? And then linking all of that system together where, you know, technically I feel like we could own, we're on the verge. I feel like we're really close to it where you go on Zillow, you see a house that you like, you see the price, you hit, I wanna buy this your information. Like you said, you upload your information. It goes up my income, my W2, my taxes for the past one to three years, um, proof of income, my driver's license, my picture ID, passport, whatever you need. All of that is uploaded. Then that is sent to a, a lender who's going to several lenders. It could be sent to multiple lenders. Then they verify me and make me an offer and say, okay, we pre-approve you for this amount. We pre-approve you for the full amount. Or we only going to pre-approve you three different lenders, giving me three different offers. I select the bank. Boom. My financing is done. Now that information is sent to an inspector, the inspector who now there's a list of associated inspectors who live in that area, who, who can go to the physical property. They have access, they have the door code so they can let themselves in because the bank provided them or the owner of the, the I, like I'm really seeing yeah, yeah. the process of this walk through and you never actually have to, to, and I think, I, again, I think it's either Zillow is trying to spearhead this um, where you don't ever need to, to really see the property. And so for all the way up to, Hey, we're going to mail you the keys. You've closed on the property. We're mailing you the keys. You now own this building. Yeah. And so do you see any, disruptions like that with Addy AI? Do you see you guys entering the financial space even more where like portfolio management, investing recommendations, stuff like that? That's where I think you guys are headed with, with AI. And I think that's going to be really powerful, especially for people with a lot of money, but they don't have the time to really sit down and, and look at, you know, buy, sell, buy here, sell here. Like, 
if I can integrate AI to do my investing and AI, I just, I just tell the AI, Hey, I want 12% returns. I want 15% returns do the work. Here's a pot of money. Go do the work. Do you see anything like that coming? So when you, when you say that, like how far out do you want me to imagine? Like how far <laughs> out do you want me to envision? <laughs> let's, let's say the next, let's say the next five years, do you see us, really puncturing that realm and entering that space where I, I think we are already have some of it right now where you have that portfolio management integration where you tell like um acorns apps like stash I, I can't imagine edward jones and charles schwab are too far behind where yeah. you have this integrated artificial intelligence managing your portfolio and just telling them, hey, I want to invest in these things. This is what I care about, whether it be long term retirement goals or passive income right now or, mm -hmm. you know, short something short term. Hey, I want to invest for my kids college. So yeah. let's say the next five to 10 years. Do you see us penetrating that realm, that space? We will puncture it. Um, and mm. so what we're talking about here is like an end to end AI mortgage system where it handles the portfolio, it handles like the marketplace, it handles like listings and showing and everything and without having any human in the loop. Um, if we look at like some of the things, I live in a city where I can take a driverless car right across the city without ever interacting with, you know, a human, which is like great. It's been in development for like, you know, 20 plus years and now- That's, where, that's where you are right now? Um, in San Francisco, yeah, they just rolled out um, public access to driverless cars. Whoa. Um, Waymo. Whoa. Wow. Which is, yeah, it's mind-blowing, right? And it's been in beta testing for a while now. I've tried it out, and it's good. But bringing the conversation back to um, mortgage lending, I think if we think as visionaries and say, great, we want this technology to be there, in like five, 10 years. And that's like the happy path that we wanna see. And then we say, oh, let's take a step back and look at like the company that we have now. The company that we have now is helping loan officers close loans faster. And that's what we're focusing on. If we try to focus on like building a great business and a great customer experience for the customer, and we have to look at the limitations of where the technology will be in the future and try to envision that. So if anything breaks within the cycle, let's say, your key doesn't get mailed to you when you, let's say you've closed on the loan, everything, you want to go see the property, the key doesn't get mailed to you. Guess what? That is a poor experience. Like you do not want that at all. So what I see is pilots happening in like 10 years of these things happening. Maybe like you can hear like one or two people who were able to close loans like that, like beta testing. But in terms of it going mainstream, I see it. Um, especially even for us as a company, since we want to provide a great experience for customers. It's like until the technology is like fully mature and it doesn't have a lot of breaks um, in the future. So publicly available, it's going to be a while. I'm going to take a guess and say more than 10 years, maybe in like the 2030s, we will see that happening. But in the next 10 years, it would just be beta pilots of these like fully automated mortgage situations what we will see now in the next one or two years and five years is exactly what we're doing at Hattie AI is where we're automating specific sectors of the market, like automating document extraction for loan opportunities, automating communication with brokers and clients. And over time, all of these different pieces would come together and they would fit perfectly for an overall automated mortgage system. Huge, huge, huge. I'm, I'm, I got goosebumps, y'all. Y'all can't see it because I'm hiding there right now, but this is huge. This is really huge. I'm really excited for the future. As long as, you know, the right safeguards are in place, I'm really excited for the future with respect to the average worker. And I, I, I want, I want to say that, you know, we're all going to have to change. We're all going to have to change. And so when people are fearful and they're saying, oh, I'm going to lose my job, AI is going to take my place. No, if you let it right, if you let it take your place, it will take your place. Yeah. But what you need to do, like the world around us is doing, is you need to evolve and you need to evolve with it because what's going to be needed is we're going to need less 
um, physical work because mm-hmm. the artificial intelligence will be doing the physical and we need more. We need you to do this. We need more thinkers. We need more technicians. We need we need troubleshooters and we need programmers and we need so your your skill set is going to have to change. The biggest impact that you know I hear about all the time is the trucking industry. You and you just said it, you confirmed it. There's there's self-driving autonomous vehicles. Yep. So and that's been a big push since I feel like COVID, but maybe even a little bit further, that yep. we're pushing for autonomous vehicles with the introduction of my um microchips, um, superconductors, and then finding the battery source to power these big diesel machines. Yep. But once we once we figure this out, <laughs> right, you need to evolve. Yep. You yep. have to evolve. You have to change your mindset and say, okay, I'm no longer a mechanic. I need to evolve into a technician. It's the same thing when we, we integrated um, drone technology, right, yeah. to replace yeah. the military. Well, not replace the military, but those soldiers had to change. They weren't unemployed. They became pilots instead of boots on the ground, which which saves lives, which takes time. And they had to evolve their skill set and change. So that's what we all have to do in order for this to really move forward. And we can make that pierce that Mr. Vanny said. So huge, huge think right there. This is huge level thinking. And I'm excited. I'm curious, um, Marcus, I'm curious um, for you, you know, you are, uh, you're building a media business. You have a real estate business. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say at some point, you know, AI gets evolved to the point where it can handle, it can be a podcaster. It can handle all the things. What's your exit plan? Have you thought about that? I absolutely have. I absolutely have thought about my exit plan. And my exit plan is to integrate technology as it suits the software and as it continues to serve. So if I can um, physically not be here and I can have a virtual AI take take the spot of, take my place, that reduces manpower, that reduces staffing. And now I can still serve my audience, right? Because the AI will have my voice, it'll have my charm, it'll have my charisma, it'll have my mindset, but now it's still serving in a better way. And I'll, I'll be truthful, I use AI to create the reels that I make off of these clips. So I'm you already using artificial intelligence yes. to find the viral clips and the uniqueness in these videos and the AI sends out. That's not me. <laughs> right? That's the AI. And so I've already started the indoctrination and integration of AI into my media company. But that's because I'm shaking hands with it. And I'm not fighting it. Right. It's it's that warm handshake It's that friendly handshake instead of saying, oh, I'm not I'm not putting technology here. I, I don't want to be the blockbuster. I don't want to be the Radio Shack. I don't want to be right. We have to become the Netflix and we have to say, hey, this this is coming. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Mr. Vandy and Addy AI have proven that they're here to stay. And so also my other exit, I'm a real estate investor. I also own a portfolio of ATMs. And so. And I have a series of other alternative investments. I invest in wine and fine art and things like that. But my most unique and exciting venture is I've journeyed into, again, a little bit of artificial intelligence, but blockchain technology in the cannabis space. And so I I own and manage a portfolio of several vending machines. And I know that sounds dated and I know that sounds old and, and out of date, but these vending machines have been upgraded with artificial artificial intelligence and cannabis to where these vending machines have the ability to check someone's age and dispense cannabis based products to a consumer and verify that they're of age they're older than 21 and it will not dispense these cannabis products oils gummies flowers tinctures potions lotions you name it and it also with the blockchain it also verifies that the product is the highest quality and safe so the biggest thing that's a huge industry and that's huge because i'm helping people i'm able to help people but also i can physically be here while that machine is selling that vending machine is making money so we've taken something old and updated and given it an upgrade and made it modern so now i can sell cannabis products to someone that's 21 and plus yep. and help them because the, the cannabis product has been verified via the blockchain 
And there's an entire ecosystem built around this to make sure that we only sell the highest grade and the highest quality because the ingredients of it and and and, and it's for your display, right? So yeah. there's a digital touch screen on this vending machine. It's not it doesn't and it doesn't accept cash. It yeah. doesn't accept coin. It, it only accepts credit card or Bitcoin. So yes. you can pay for your cannabis. It'll verify your age, verify your of age to consume it, and it'll give you a description That's before sick. you even purchase it. So I had, I had no idea. I'm with you, man. I'm with. I'm we we right here. We right. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. That's 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 really sick. I didn't know that like vending machines had AI integrated in them and some sort of like identity verification, some sort of like KYC. You know, some like know your customer. These are things that banks do, and it's it's insane. It's happening. Wow. It's happening. So we have to stop fighting it, M Mr. Van. And I have gone off the preserve here, but Mr. Van, what do you see in the future for Addy AI? What's coming next? Yeah, I mean, taking over the market. <laughs> <laughs> ah, mastermind, love it. Uh, so. Uh, what's coming next for us is um, right now we're focused on providing like great experiences for lenders and uh, banks and brokers. Um, but what's coming next for us is doing a whole lot of work with compliance. You know, I think that's the next frontier in AI in general. A lot of these technologies are in their infancy. So being able to be at the forefront of working on whether it's like evaluating our models performances increasing the performance of the model, continuing to make the product better, uh, incremental improvements. That I think is what is next for us. And so right now, since we're just focusing on making sure that we have all these AI technologies be able to like automate um, document extraction, communication for brokers and clients, we're building a whole lot of suites in the back end that would be, you know, compliance suites. And then once we're able to produce those results out to the public, then we can, you know, become like a market leader in the space and then eventually, you know, go on to, to take on the market. Um, I think this is an industry where um, traditional mortgage lenders and mortgage tech companies, like I'm going to call them out. They're not really doing stuff about it, you know, and <laughs> how it's like there and someone needs to shake up this industry. And, you know, that's sure. what we're, we're here to do. We need you. We need more thinkers like you. We need more thinkers like you to to innovate and continue to push against the grain and push back and say, no, why are we still doing this? Well, that's how we've done. I hate that word. We've always done it this way. Always done it that Let's, way. Doesn't, it doesn't mean it can't get better. Yeah. It can always, always improve. This is huge. Huge, huge, huge. Well, y'all, we are out of time. <laughs> we got to let Mr. Vondi go. He has a company to run. He has many more lives to change. And he has a market, real estate market, market real estate industry to take over. Mr. Vondi, how can my audience connect with you? How can we learn more and get on board? Because this train has left the station. But it's not too late to, to subscribe and get to know you further. What, how can we find you? Um, go on our website and schedule a demo with me. I will be the one in the demo, and uh, they can get to chat with me that way. Super, super dope. Check them out. Get connected, y'all. This is this is huge. This is the future, right? Again, you can fight it all you want, or you can get on board and you can shake hands with it and be a part of a revolution, a part of a healthy change with, with some safeguards. And again, we have to evolve. We have to get better with it. That's all. Don't let your smartphone outsmart you. That's all. <laughs> Mr. Vandy, brother, thank you for being here. And thank you for giving back in this way. This is huge. And I appreciate you making time to give back to the gentleman style audience in this way. This means a lot. So thank you. Thank and I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever quit. Don't give up. Please. We need you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. I appreciate it. It was great being here. Powerful. And thank you all my audience for being here on gentleman style podcast show i hope this message has served you i hope this has helped you inspired you encouraged you mr vandy one more thing what would you say to that young pioneer that young entrepreneur out in the audience who is back is against the wall he's going through heartache and trouble in his business what would you say to them right now 
watching this this interview any inspiring words you've dropped so many nuggets this episode what would you say to them i would say move move to a place that is the mecca of what you're doing you know if you're trying to build an ai company move to san francisco you'll figure it out when you get there um if you're trying to build um a biotech company move to boston you know just move to the place that has the most opportunities for what you're doing when you're a founder the odds are stacked so much against you that the one thing that you can do is change your location and if you're in america at least and then that would increase your pool of opportunities and then you know create more luck and more success for you i love that no one has ever said that. that's huge move you're not a tree you're not a tree you can move you can change your locale you can get around people of like minds that's huge i i wow that's good that's good no one has ever thought of that so thank you for that thank you for that man this has been impactful. I hope this message has served you. I hope this has inspired you. And I hope this has encouraged you to continue to go after your dreams, go after your goals and crush it and take this world by storm. Let nothing stop you. Let no one get in your way. If you can see it, you, you, it's that, that heartbeat, that pulse that you wake up with every day. It's called purpose. So go after it. You choose Like we end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family and always, always, Take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and the incredible, the amazing, the super fragilistic expialidocious Mr. Michael Fondi of Addy AI. Signing off. Love you guys. Bye.